Welcome to Nexus Medical Media. In this video, we are going to talk about tranexamic acid. This is a very important drug. Uh, unfortunately, when I was doing pharmacology, I didn't do it. And then I met this drug in Obsengain. Right. So uh, we are going to discuss this drug uh, from a case. Right. So we have a case of heavy menstrual bleeding, also known as uh, menorrhagia. Right. So it's an old uh, term. Right, so you have this case. Your patient, Rutendo Chamisa, a 36 year old, has been bothered by gradual worsening heavy menstrual bleeding for two years. She schedules an appointment to discuss treatment options, but she has some specifics. Number one, she prefers to avoid surgery, although surgical manipulations, she doesn't want them. She is reluctant to use uh, hormonal medications because of uh, side effects. Right. She has been taking NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, but they are inadequate. Bleeding is continuing. Right. So Mrs. Chamisa asks if there is any other agent that you can... Uh, offer her to reduce the menstrual blood loss, right? So what can you offer to her? Let's recap. Heavy menstrual bleeding, right? So heavy menstrual bleeding, I said is amenorrhagia. It impairs the quality of life and it prompts many women to seek gynecologic consultation. And many of them would want to avoid surgery, right? So there is, uh, so so it means surgical treatment is out of the picture. We are only considering medical management, right? So medical management can be classified into two main groups: hormonal and non-hormonal. The non-hormonal here, what you have is NSAIDs, right? Uh, and hormonal include off-label use of oral contraceptives. Uh, injectable depot, medroxyprogesterone acetate, uh, high oral progestin, for example, norethedrone acetate, 5 milligram tablets, or these are tablets. And you also have a levonorgestrel intrauterine system, Mirena. Right, so what can you offer to her? Right, so you can offer tranexamic acid. It's another a non-hormonal. Right? So non-hormonals, now you have to the enzymes and tranexamic acid. Women who experience heavy menstrual bleeding have an elevated level of plasminogen activators in their endometrium. Right? And this is the enzyme, the plasminogen activator is the enzyme that facilitates dissolution of the clothes, as shown on this diagram. These enzymes can be inhibited by antifibrinolytic agents such as tranexamic acid which competitively blocks the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin. Right, so this will reduce uh, the destruction of the clot, fibrinolysis. Right, so there are studies that have been done, right? So the clinical trials were started in the U.S. around 1960, right? So the, this agent, tranexamic acid, proved to be superior to a placebo NSAIDs, and cyclic uh, oral progestin. However, the levonorgestrel intrauterine system has been found to be more effective than tranexamic acid in reducing the menstrual blood loss. Right, so uh, what's the dosage? Right, so of course you'd prefer oral dose, right? It depends with the condition of the patient. If the patient is unconscious, you just prefer IV. The next thing you need to consider is the renal function. In case of normal renal function, the dosage of tranexamic acid is uh, 1.3 milligrams, 1,300. Right. So the tablet is actually 650 milligrams. So you take two tablets, making it 1,300. Right. So those two tablets, with the total of this dosage, you take them three times a day, making a total of 3,900 milligrams, right? So you do this for uh, five days during menstruation, right? In case of impaired renal function, you, you should adjust uh, the dose 
you should they, there is always a pamphlet uh, inside uh, the box right so you read and see how you can reduce the dosage right but the patients will always be worried about side effects right so because of concerns that tranexamic acid may increase the risk of venous thromboembolism the agent is contraindicated in women who have a history of venous thromboembolism patients taking oral contraceptives uh, they usually have this hypercoagulable state right so some patients won't consider taking tranexamic acid if the patient is already on those oral contraceptives but the fda recommends that they take tranexamic acid only if there is a strong medical need and benefit of treatment that outweighs the potential risks of uh, thrombotic events. The other side effects you can worry about are nausea, diarrhea, or vomiting. Um, so if there is diarrhea, you reduce the dose. Uh, in rare cases, there can be visual disturbances. In, if this happens, discontinue. Other side effects include convulsions, uh, allergic skin reactions, dizziness, hypotension, uh, that is if you uh, give on rapid IV injection. So that's the side effects that you need to worry about. The, but the biggest is thromboembolism, venous thromboembolism. We can safely say tranexamic acid is actually great for women who prefer to or those who want to avoid hormonal agents. The NICE guidelines will recommend that uh, when medical management is appropriate in the treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding, levonorgestrel intrauterine system is considered the first line and tranexamic acid the second line. Now let's solve our case. So this is what happens. When she hears about uh, tranexamic acid, Mrs. Chamisa is eager to try it. She is pleased that it does not contain hormones and needs to be taken only five days or fewer each month, right? You don't take them like uh, the, the tablets continuously. And you give a, a prescription, schedule a follow-up visit um, uh, like three months later, and then she comes to you and say, wow, this is great. She is satisfied. Wonderful. So let's conclude about this dosage one more time. Right, so I said the tablet is 650 milligrams, but you see that other tablets are actually 500, not 650. Right, but let's just uh, go with the 650 milligrams. You take two of them, meaning to say at once you take uh, 1,300 milligrams and daily dose is 3,900 milligrams. Right, so you should you shouldn't take more than uh, four thousand milligrams per day. Tranexamic acid has other uses, and these include hereditary angioedema, epistaxis, nose bleeding. It can also be used as an injectable agent uh, for use at the time of dental extraction in hemophilic patient, right, to reduce this bleeding. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this video. Please make sure you you hit the thumbs up subscribe and share with your colleagues right so uh, if you want to read more about the studies that have been done there is this article uh, by dr andrew m Konitz. right he is a, a physician in the u.s so you can uh check the description and then i'll put um a link where you can find the article and read it through and you'll find other references other studies that have been done concerning tranexamic acid